So good morning, everybody, and welcome to our third digital platform marketplace hosted by Ermsa. And this morning, we are introducing Isolytics, and I'll get to that um, a little bit later. But just to say thank you to over the 95 registered participants this morning. And I'm sure, like with the previous two, you are going to have access to such a wealth of information around how to risk mature your organization, how to get to a risk intelligent state by using some of the leading or at least considering some of the leading software um, application platforms that are available. Now, why is UMSA doing this? Well, as chief risk advisor in the last, I would think maybe 18 uh, to 24 months, we have been inundated with requests from our members for UMSA to guide them in the right direction, which of the software applications that are available are the best ones to consider. And of course, we can't do that. We have all of these platforms participating in UMSA's um, uh, value prop, uh, proposition uh, in producing um, what UMSA does best, and that is sharing of thought leadership information, sharing of best practice. And that is why we did this creating a platform where you can view um, and participate and ask questions around the softwares that uh, is available. And so that is why we're doing this and we welcome all of you this morning. Uh, important, I think, to mention now is that we've disabled the chat box. And the reason for that is we find that for the Isolytics team to adequately respond to your questions, to your comments, uh, that the Q&A box is what works best. So please use Q&A. Isolytics has got a dedicated team that will be responding to your questions um, as we go through this morning. The session is from 10 to 11, so I'm not going to spend too much time, but I would really like to ask you to ask your questions, to post your comments, because in that we learn from you, and of course we can address the questions that you have in as far as the, the uh, digital platforms go that we use. So I did say I'm introducing Isolytics this morning. And I think without further ado, just to thank Isolytics for making this relationship possible with UMSA. As I said, this is our third event that we do. And I think this is very important because Isolytics is a solution that builds on machine learning, that builds on artificial intelligence, and it's one of the first ones that we've actually had that highlights those two elements um, as part of their data analytics, as part of the concept of becoming risk intelligent and risk resilient. And so this morning, we have three representatives from Isolytics, which I'll be introducing to you right away, starting with Ntabi Singh Lozini. Ntabi is the chief operating officer at Isolytics. Of course, we all know her because she's been with UMSA before and she used to be the training manager at UMSA for as long as 10 years. So Ntabi saying nice seeing you again this morning and welcome. And then of course, Faith Nguenya. Faith is the CEO of Isolytics. She's also the 100% black woman owner of Isolytics with experience in various industries. And then Niku, Niku Sneema, nice seeing you again. Niku is the original inventor and the subject matter expert um, and has risk management experience and, and even experience over 23 management systems. So nobody better qualified than to hand over to Nico Snowman this morning. And Nico, thanks again for partnering with UMSA in making this morning uh, possible and good luck to you and the team and I'll be handing over to you. Thank you, Nico. Thank you very much. Um, I just want to, to ask um, my colleague, Ntabi, to just go for us through, through uh, the, the, the introduction quickly of who is Isolytics and what are we doing? Excellent. Good morning, everybody. Um, thanks, Chris, for that wonderful introduction. Um, it's a great pleasure to be with you all, albeit on the other side, my UMSA family. Um, we're very happy and delighted to be partnering with UMSA today um, as Isolytics for the software demo um, series, part of the demo series. Um, as Chris and my colleague uh, Nico has mentioned, my name is Ntabi Singh and I am the Chief 
um, Operating Officer at iPolitics. And I'm not alone, I'm with uh, Faith Nguyenia, who is the CEO and, uh, of iPolitics, as well as Nico, who's the original um, inventor of iPolitics. So we're very pleased here to be with you today, um, just to provide some insight on our software that has, that has really been meticulously designed and developed um, with the end user in mind. You know, having carefully listened to professionals in the governance, risk, um, compliance, and the assurance space, um, we've really taken careful consideration into the, you know, the pain points that, um, you know, people in that space have actually experienced over the years. So our software really does try to address and, and largely addresses those pain points that people have, you know, have had to navigate through with the normal software that, that is out there. So, you know, not only that, in addressing that, but also realizing that not to no two organizations are actually the same. So having that in mind, we've actually um, brought together a solution that actually has the flexibility to be tailored to every single environment that, um, you know, your organization presents. So Isolytics really is uh, truly a business enabler. And I don't want you to take our word for it. We will actually unpack all of those aspects for you today. So first things first, um, if I can just do uh, a very important aspect around Isolytics. Isolytics is actually the only triple BEE level one GRC software company um, in, in South Africa. Um, and the ownership is 100% uh, black female owned. And what will really make your procurement and your supply chains quite pleased is that we have 135% procurement recognition. So, you know, just make sure that that message actually lands with your with your um, procurement and supply chains, um, because they'll be really pleased to hear that. But not only that, further to this, we're very pleased that we're a proudly South African company that has been developed and supported by one of the leading universities in Southern Africa. Um, and that's just to ensure that, you know, there is that futuristic thinking and also that it embraces our IR 4.0 methodologies. Um, it's powered by Crest Advisory Africa, um, who some of you might you know, be familiar with Crest Advisory Africa, um, and they are the leaders in corporate governance, risk, compliance, and assurance. Thanks, Nico. Next slide. So while we get there, um, as, as, as we transition to the slides, the, set, the next slide, um, our, our isolytics footprint has really been extended um, and has a global uh, network um, over the years since inception. And through its extended customer base has been able to, to, to reach and have a global presence in Europe, in Americas, in Asia Pacific, Middle East and Africa. So you can see that, um, you know, this has also been uh, extended via our value added resellers. Um, and you can see that, you know, it has had, uh, you know, global appeal as well as global reach, which we really are quite proud of, um, given the number of years that we, we have been in, in the industry for and industry players for. So I know that you actually have not come to, to hear all those, uh, the, the, those aspects of it, but what we're actually going to get into now is the actual meat, the technical aspects, the functionality. Um, Chris mentioned, you know, the machine learning um, and the IRS. Aspects. So Nico will now take us through the, tech, the technical um, as well as the system functionality. Thanks, Nico. Over to you. Thank you very much for that, um, my colleague. I, I, uh, the, the agenda of this morning is very simple. We are going to be, to be looking at, firstly, the analytics framework based. I uh, just want to see, uh, start my video. Okay, sorry. There we are. Uh, the framework based the risk uh, based methodology. Then we are going to go into the internationally pioneering P square ST square methodology of internal controls. Because if you're looking at um, at at maturity in risk management in any any other kind of system, everything is actually built on internal controls. Then we are going to look at um, at the system itself that is actually giving you the combined risk compliance assurance and the audit um, functionalities. And we are going to include the, as well, the I square mass that is, that is just here at the, at, at the bottom. We've got time recording that is, that is actually in there, especially if you're looking at comparing um, people's work with, with the production environment, as well as working from home. Um, this, is, this is a new uh, world, a new 
uh, place that that all of us need to be um, adapting into and time recording is very important um, especially for consultants now as well because you as a consultant need to to demonstrate that you have actually done the work and 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 that you can actually bill your billable hours in terms of that then the i square mass i square mass is actually an abbreviation for incident and investigation management system or management administration system so this is i want to say this is one of the leading i've been working over the years with a lot of um in instant management systems and we have actually built something there that is that is actually looking at the the internal controls your financial analysis there and everything else then if you're looking at at risk assessment i am having it here as demystifying risk assessments with the analytics checklist methodology now if you're looking at iso 31010 and other methodologies about um, risk assessments. The checklist is actually your strongest and your, your most simplest kind of risk, risk assessment methodology that you need to, that you can have. But that has to do with monitoring. The question is, how do I put a value to it and make it a measurement? And how do I analyze that? And how do I actually bring it into um, a risk environment? And then we are going to demo for you, I want to say the world leading bow tie methodology. We have got exclusive rights um, in 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 um, in Southern Africa to actually um, have the bow tie myth methodology that is actually working with global customers all over the world. Um, and then we are going to look at quickly how um, visualization, how you can actually take the information that you've got and 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 put it into a visualization visualization platform. Um, and we are working with a few there, as well as then I will just talk quickly about um, our machine learning as well as artificial intelligence um, programs and processes, and then our endorsements, and then we will go over to questions. So the first one is, what is a framework-based risk assessment methodology? Now, if you're looking, looking at that, I just want to, to give you this, this overview quickly here, that if you're looking at isolytics, Isolytics is a GRC system, um, uh, governance, risk, and compliance. It is a, a combined assurance system because I will show you that now. It is um, an I square mess. It is a, it is it, it is giving you the bow tie risk assessment methodology. It is an enterprise risk management system. Um, we are we are having frameworks like um, ISO King Four, um, uh, ITIL, COBIT Four. Um, etc. And we have already built this into the system to actually make sure that you can actually at any time, at any time, understand and know what is the maturity of your system in real time. We've got a mobile application there as well, then the checklist as well as the bow tie is risk assessment methodologies, compliance, I will demonstrate that to you, and then surveys. And all of this is actually built on um, the the university that we are working with that is actually building this for us are leaders in the industry about uh, machine learning and if there's enough data that we can actually put it into artificial intelligence to give you a predictive understanding of what needs to be done and how you can do that now um if we i i want to actually um if if we are if we are going through this this process i want to actually start with with our system. I don't want to give you a presentation. I want to show you if we are looking at 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 anything, this is this is our our login into into um, the Athletics Assurance System. And I'm going to to give you an overview of actually what is happening um, in terms of what we are seeing as combined assurance. So and maturity. So if you're looking looking at this, you can immediately with with one with one glance, one, one view, you can actually see that, that if you have got three or four or five management systems, whether it is in security, whether it is in risk management, whether it is in compliance, in business continuity, whether it is in document management, we've got on this left side, we've got 23 management systems that is already um, preloaded onto the system with every requirement that you have to have there. If you're looking at ISO, 31,000, it is your risk management um, management system. And out of that, 
we are we have actually went to look at what is each and every requirement that you have to have to actually implement this and make it as mature as you can now as you can see here we've got a wagon wheel approach um and or or um um a diagram that is actually indicating to you what the standard that you are working with or the framework that you are working with is actually um stipulating and then we are measuring it against that now i want to go into into the standard as you can see here we 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 have got on left hand side we have got the the framework already so the whole framework is actually giving you the context of the environment now if you're looking at iso 73 ISO 73 speaks about the, con the context, internal context, external context. And if you're going to look further into each and every standard or, or framework, we've got legal context, we've got subcontractor context, human rights context, stakeholder context, a regulatory context, permit context, license context. There are treaties, there are other things now as well. And this gives you in one environment, the contextual analysis that you can actually understand and that you can actually actually measure and I will get to the measurement now. Now most of the most of the the standards or most of the management systems has got leadership. That is the tone at the top. This is what we're talking about. Then what is your planning? How do you plan your risk assessment? How, how do you plan your your risk um, assessments across the board from the board to operational risk? Then we, we are going into into your resources. Uh, your risk champions, what are they doing? Do, do they have, do you have the resources, the competence, the awareness, the communication in your, in, in your environment? And here we've got specific measurements and all of these measurements are actually um, based on the same methodology. Um, then we're going into operations. Operations is where we are working with the grassroots levels, where we are actually saying that this is where we are rolling it out on a strategic level, on an operational, uh, a technical level, a tactical level and an operational level. Um, and in this, we are then going over into performance and your performance summary is actually a combination of monitoring. Now monitoring is separate from measurement. Measurement is where, you, where you've got a value put to the monitoring environment. Then how do you analyze that? How do you analyze the, the, your risk register as well as your inherent risk rating versus, versus your, your the residual um, uh, the result there, and how do you evaluate it? How do you go over into exercises and testings? And we are going. We can we can add here for you a separate your strategic risk register, a, a departmental risk register. It doesn't matter how many it is. Operational risk, um, as well as internal audit, your management review, and then everything else there. And then how do you continuously improve? Now, if you are understanding risk management, risk management is actually all about the last principle of actually ISO 31000, and that has to do with continual improvement. So how do you continually improve? How do you close out the audit findings or the corrective actions that, that, you, that you need to, uh, to close out? And what is your continual improvement strategy that you've got based on the P-square-S, T-square methodology? Now, please make a note of that. P-square-S, T-square is actually very simple. Because if we're looking at the P square ST square, and I will get, get to this now, um, is, is that the P square ST square is what, what I have seen with my 15 years, 20 years experience in actually um, working specifically with, with boards, executives, um, and so forth, is, is that people are doing and companies are doing risk assessments. But is it structured? And one of the requirements of ISO 31000 of risk or of risk management is, are you structured? Are you timely? Do you have a structured approach in doing things? Because structure gives strategy more validity. Now, if we're looking, looking at that, the P square is T square, stands for the P square is people and processes. The S is for systems. Then we've got T square that has to do with tools and technology. And I have got a slide on, on that, but you need to know that 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 we have actually built this from the start over the last since about 20, 2014, and um, it is actually uh, groundbreaking. Now, if you go back to to the framework based um, question that I've got on the on the agenda, I want to show you 
if we're looking at ISO 73 and we're doing an environmental analysis of, of, of your internal context, internal context and, and external context is actually the precursors for planning and implementing your risk management process. Because without risk, you cannot have a risk-based approach. Now, if you're looking, if you're looking at, at, at this, you will see that, that we've got, we've actually preloaded everything that, that you are actually getting in ISO 73, as well as in this specific management system. Now, objectives, without the risk, sorry, without objectives, there is no, no risk at all. Now, if you're looking, looking at this, we, we've built in here a compliance measurement, a yes or no, uh, you can toggle that, I will do that now. And then we've got an internal control environment. Now your internal control environment has to do with your P-square, ST, T-square methodology. What kind of controls and how strong are your controls there? And what is the matrix that you are actually using there? Then we are going into your document assurance matrix. Now, if you are looking at evidence, most of the, of the internal auditors and most of auditing um, environments are looking at, at six um, specific um, audit evidences. The first audit evidence is what do I observe in an environment? The second one is who do I, 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 I interview? The, th the, the third one is, has to do with um, what kind of proof? You are saying something, but how do you prove it? And that is your third one. So that is documentary evidence because the documents link everything of P square, ST square, it links it together. It integrates it, it dovetails it. And then we are going over into analytical evidence, into technical evidence, into conformative evidence, into physical and mathematical evidence. Now, these three uh, environments give you a level of assurance. And we are speaking here directly out of King 4. So King 4 is actually asking um, in, in, in principle 15, it sets six levels of assurance out there. And each of you are actually assurance providers whether you are a line function, a specialist function, an internal audit function, an external audit function, um, a, a, a forensic um, auditor function or a regulator. And we are measuring that. Then we are going into, we are combining risk management and, and, um, and internal controls or internal audit together with this non-conformance or audit findings. And then we are going over into the combined assurance matrix that is as it is in uh, in terms of King Form, and I will do that now for you. And each of each of those has got has got a a um, uh, a weight to it. I just want to get my spotlight here. A weight to it that you can actually know exactly where you are standing and how serious is the non-conformance or how serious is the audit. And then you are getting to a level of risk. And all of these, you can see the methodology here is is not a fly by night methodology we've been we've been implementing this for the last 10 years about from the biggest project way where i was working on um the how train from 2007 with the biggest international footprint that we had and then we are going on to, over into your risk matrix itself and then we've got an an evidence um depository as well as a project management depository now how does it work let me show you so if you're looking at the objectives and we can go and, and change that and we can say um, the objectives of the IMSA community and that's, it is as simple as that. So is the configuration necessary? No, you can do it yourself. It is as simple as that. And the question is now compliance. Are we having objectives for the, for the IMSA community? Yes or no? And you can see there, we have toggled it. So our visual representation already is actually working in real time with us. Secondly, we're going over into our uh, internal control environment. Now we have built here a matrix that was actually working for all the engineers globally that we could actually understand and that, that, that we could actually present to everybody. Now this has to do with, with 10 levels as well as with, with, with 10 evaluations. Now, if you look at this, you, you, can, you can say, let's, let's make a choice and say there is no compliance there. There is no compliance there. And you can see there, it is red because I want to, to take this one and actually in your internal controls, go and say, but we were actually very weak there. And there is um, uh, 
a matrix that we can develop for, for you, that we can integrate with your environment, and we can go there and measure it on a 30%. And that 30%, just watch the level of assurance, because that is continuously changing. It has actually changed now from, from, from a 90 to a 41. And the document that has to be there to actually prove what you have done is possibly um, in the current state. And we have actually looked at what is the, the desired state and what is the current state. So we are busy now with evaluating the current state to actually do for you a continuous gap analysis. So the document in the desired state is the document is current. It has been approved. It is on the documentary system and all relevant people has got immediate access to it where they are working. So it is where they are, are actually having to execute that work that they've got it electronically, it doesn't matter how. And then everyone has been trained in this and there is evidence in this regard. Now you can see if we are looking at, at, at going backwards, we are taking one, um, one part of the evidence away, but no evidence. People, people need needs to be trained. So now we are saying here, yeah, it is a 40% because the document is current, but not yet approved. So there has been thinking going into it. And you can see the level of assurance. It has now dropped from 100% about to 22%. Now, this is in real time. You can see it here. I'm not manipulating the system at all. Then we are, we're speaking about a non-conformance. Now, if you don't bring your non-conformances or your audit findings into your risk assessment environment or your risk profile environment, then you are actually excluding one of the biggest inputs that you've got there, as well as if you don't align that with the principles of King 4 that is giving you, and I will go to, to the CAM matrix in a moment. So if you're looking at the non-conformances, I can guarantee you, most of you that is in risk management doesn't know what is the definition of a major non-conformance or a major finding. And if you know that, you will know exactly how to actually address that and how to prevent it. Because a major non-conformance to do, has to do with the total failure of the system. And as a total failure of a management system, whether you are in supply chain, in human resources, in ICT, uh, it doesn't matter. It is the same methodology. And with this, we've actually allocated there a minus 50% a minus 50 on your level of assurance. On your minor non-conformances, that could be a systemic um, uh, challenge there uh, in, in rolling out what you need to roll out. We have allocated there a minus 25% in, in our algorithm. And then into ob observations. Observations is very important because that gives you actually as you are going to be receiving a non-conformance as a matter on which level so this and this this is actually a positive thing. and then opportunities for improvement where you're looking actually into the crystal ball and you are seeing but yo we need to have a system for for this thing we we need to actually plan for this because there's a budgetary process that we need to go through and this gives you a 20 percent positive because this is actually where you are identifying an, an opportunity for improvement and going over into, into saying we are preventing this 18 months already prior to the actual non-conformance. And then we've got out of scope and acceptable. Now, because we have got the, 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 um, the non-conformance that, that we are saying that the objectives is not, is not well defined, we are saying here yeah, that we are going into a major non-conformance and that gives you a minus 50 on your level of assurance so immediately that is that is actually creating for you a maturity on your objectives and then we are looking at your your combined assurance matrix now you can go and look at at laws for, um, at principle 15 of um of king four and it is stipulated just as it is there level one is your line line function level two is your 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 organization's specialist functions that is a risk manager, a quality manager, a safety manager. It is all specialist functions that is contributing to the assurance um, profile of the company. Level three has to do with your internal auditors. Four is your is your external auditors. Five is your your is the your your fraud examiners, and six is a regulatory um, power or authority that that can come in there and take your license away. 
uh, like in the mines, they are, um, and with other places now as well, um, in my experience, if there's a safety problem on the mines, the DMR is actually closing the mine for a period of time until they can give assurance. Now, we have got here at the moment a four, and let's say that we have identified that through, um, through a specialist function to say that the specialist function has actually identified that there is something wrong with, with, with those objectives. Now, on that one day, we are, we are giving the value and you can see there, the level of assurance went up from 14 to 21. Now, this is your full assessment. Now, out of this, you, your level of risk is automated. Isn't that fantastic? How do you want to sit there? How do you want to actually um, make this more easier? Because you are not sitting with a lot of people around the table, like at, at, a, at, a, at a board meeting and, and, and each one has got its own um, approach to risk management. And you are getting actually a wrong understanding of what is my, my consequence, what is my likelihood. And we've got here a measurable tool for you that can actually give you that to provide a level of assurance to the board, firstly, but also a level of risk to to say that this is where we need to actually work on. And then we have plotted that, and you can see that was number one, and it should lie on, on 20. There we are. So whether we are working with this graph or, 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 or this matrix, it doesn't matter. It is, we, 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 are, we, are, we are customizing it for you. And now you can see with everything in your internal context, what do you need to actually work from to actually Take it away from your high risk environment into your significant risk, into your medium, into your low. And this is real time. And then each and every evidence, each and every evidence that you've got, and this is based on the IPPF from the, the, um, the Institute of Internal Auditors that is combined with ISO 19001, the, the auditing principles. We are we're speaking here about the observation, verbal, documentary evidence, technical, analytical, confirmative evidence, and physical and mathematical evidence. Now, if you look at this, this is everything that you can actually work with. And if you upload that, it's as easy as this. And you've got a record of the whole value chain and the whole history and the whole life cycle of what you what what you were actually implementing there and what you've got there. So if you close that, then we can also give a task overview to say that we need to update our our objectives, and we can add that quickly. It, it is a task to obtain the, the sign off issuer is me, and we're saying the receiver is, let's say, Paul, and we can put a date there on Friday. And it is as simple as that. And you've got a project management system that is actually working for you. And there is the, 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 the task, and we can actually analyze those tasks for you. And out of this, so it is a process. Risk management is not a once-off thing. Risk management is a systematic process that we need to, need to actually follow. So if you look at this, you can actually, with all the, the requirements that you've got within the, you can actually have an immediate gap analysis. There's your gap analysis. You don't have to, have to, have to get um, some, uh, some consulting firm in and do a gap analysis that is that is going to cost you um, a lot of money. I know because we are doing it for companies. And out of this, you can actually go go down and see what is the represent um, your actual graphs, your interactive graphs that you have actually built there on top to determine what is my compliance profile. There's your profile. What is my internal control effectiveness profile? There it is. Now I can see where do I need to go and work actually on what is critical. So th this is your critical controls that you need to be need to, to actually work on. Then your document assurance matrix. Your document assurance matrix is actually talking about how good am I in my processes and in my structures and procedures, etc. That is combining and actually gluing everything together. And then I've got a level of assurance and a level of risk. Isn't that fantastic? because it is actually giving you a very interactive process of saying that this is my level of assurance, this is my level of risk, and I know exactly where I am standing. And then it gives me a risk profile. I can guarantee you no other company that you have seen or that you will see in, in, in the next year um, is doing this. And then 
we are so now you can see where where can you actually actually place in and we can do that for you to actually place in in for you a line for you for your your risk appetite and your risk tolerance isn't that fantastic it's all in one in one place and then we're going over into your your non-conformances I want to see here as an executive, as a CEO, as a previously executive on that big project, the how train, I want to see who is doing my combined, my, my, my assurance, who is actually giving the assurance to me, is it only external people, that is a negative, or is my internal um, resources playing a role there or not. And then my combined assurance is exactly the same to say above the line, it is uh, the one to three levels, your line function, your specialist function, as well as the the um, the internal audit function. Is it above the line? Is your focus above the line, or is it below the line? And you can see that any time there. So this is this is visual, and it is immediately available in real time. And the beauty of all of these is that it is then actually summing it it up for you in all your environments that you need to, to actually work with. So whether you are in working in your external context, human rights context, uh, internal context, your legal context, and just to, just, to put, just to put something, a drop in, in, in this big ocean for you. Did you know that there is a, a, um, a standard on risk management on the legal environment? Please go and make a note. It is ISO 31002. And that is a fantastic standard because it gives you the legal space that you that you need to actually actually audit and that you need to be actually working with. Your licenses, water license, a a, a demolishing license, um, a um, anything that you are working with, your permits, um, uh, your stakeholder analysis, subcontractors. This all it gives you a total overview of what is my internal context, and we can do go and do the same um, in in your um, in your leadership, the planning, your support, be, because everything is built on a Microsoft platform. So it is so easy. We are actually getting all these things that we need to have. You're going to ask me now, how do we report? Very very easy. We've got firstly for you a spider graph that we can actually um, show you what is what is the the uh, um, the status now at the moment. Secondly, we can also give you a full report um, that is that is pre-populated of everything that you've got there. And then thirdly, I'm going to demo this one for you. That is actually a very simple you a very simple issue. Um, or reporting because you've got internal control effectiveness. We can say what is our risk profile and what is our non-conformances, and we can generate that, and it will take you about five to seven seconds. And your report is available, and you can just take it and 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 actually complete it for the um, with your interpretation, um, what you have done, where you are, and we can we can allocate anything there. So if we've got that, then the question is. What is what is the P square is T square methodology? And I want to I want to go go to to our integrated systems. Now, if you're looking at our integrated systems, it's fantastic. This is our um, our instant and investigation management system, our auditing system that has been um, well received in the market uh, from various blue chip companies. Our checklist, um, fantastic methodology here. Yeah? And then our surveys, and then I'm, I, I will de demo for you the bow tie analysis as well as the ice cream mass. I see that we've we we've got some some time left there, so I'm I'm going to to show you now if we're looking at at incident management in a risk space. Um, how do you actually measure that? So if you're looking at at um, at incidents that is actually aligned with management systems, you need to be looking at at how, how does an incident affect your environment? Now, this is very easy. It is just identifying your space where you are and I can click here and it gives me um, a GPS because very important, we are going to show you visualization and without GPSs, we cannot plot it where, where did it actually happen. So very simple, this one. The description is also very simple. It is reported by Nico 
and then the type of incident, let's go for risk management. So risk management, and the question is, is it now? And, and we are drilling down into, into this, this space. And we're looking here at strategic risk, operational risk, marketing risk, information technology risk, HR risk, financial, legal compliance, um, et cetera. Any, anything that is, that is available for you as a category in your environment. Let's go for operational risk. And now we're looking at in a production environment, what is your product liability? And what is your maintenance? What is your, and let's go for product failure. And immediately we are bringing in, in this whole, whole space, the audit as well. Now, if there's a product failure, the question is how big is the product failure? Is it a minor failure? Is it, is it an observation that you can actually, actually see that or, or, or do something about that? And I am, I am choosing here, it is a minor non-conformance because it is already giving you and going into your operational space where you are actually working with that, with that environment as well. And you can see here, we are actually looking here from physical security, safety, risk information, food safety, anti-bribery, business continuity, asset management, anything that you have got in your space, we have actually built it already. And we can actually give it to you. The description, you can go and do what you what you want there, and all the lovely things of, of spell checking, etc., is in there. But I want to come to the crux of the, the incident detail. I want to crack to get to this, and this is where we are sitting with the loss is is possibly ten thousand. It we can change the value of of it to be in zar in in US dollars. Uh, it doesn't matter. So is it a financial loss or is it a reputation loss? Is it an environmental loss? Is it a legal loss? What kind of, what kind of loss is it? Let's keep it on, on, on financial. And this is where we are speaking about the P-square, S-T-square methodology. Now, the P-square, S-T-square methodology is our own developed technology to actually structure risk management. And if you're looking at people controls, what kind of controls did you have there? And we can, with your input, we can, we can have this as a drop-down menu and just to have a resource P1 or P2 or P3. And all of this is feeding into, into our learning management system, uh, so, sorry, into our machine learning system. And then the value of those people controls are possibly 50,000 um, rand for that, that event. And the question is, how strong was my internal controls? Let's say it was a 30%. And now we can, we can do for your process, for your process controls, we can do the same. Process one, um, process one, and with a drop down menu, it is just much better. And we can have process two and process three, and we can have the processes. People don't know what is the value of processes. So please, Go and calculate if you need to have a calculation on this. This is where the money is actually going into the drain and where your controls are actually failing um, the environment. And we can say that it is 60,000 bucks. And we can go there and because the, the process has fails, I'm not going to go through each and, and every one. I want to show you that each and every one is actually working interactively. There's your, your controls. You can see what is your value. You can also see what is my actual actual loss versus my controls that I've got. So actually you are not losing 10,000 Rand. You are losing actually 100,000 Rand already because your, your, your controls that you've got is actually failing you. And that is what we need to, to be talking about. And this is where we've got the value of loss versus the value of the controls immediately available for you. It is just through a drop-down menu and we can do that for you because you need to have your, your asset register in place, your personnel register in place, your process register in place, your systems to understand what is the value of your systems. And as you can see here at the bottom, even your incidents gives you um, a level of assurance. That's a 10, your level of risk, it's a nine. And then your residual risk rating um, is a 23. And then we are going to go into, into your corrective actions. And corrective actions is exactly what the, interred, the internal auditors wants. They want to know what is your immediate corrections that you've done there? What is your root cause analysis that you have done? What is the action plan going forward? Who is going to be signing it off? The HOD or anybody else? And how is the risk going to be evaluated or monitored? And I just want to, so it is monthly, daily, we can, we can say daily, and then our notification system. If we have got access to, 
to do your um, to your email database, we can send it to to all of them uh, or the person that that has been identified. Now, this is the power of if we're looking at the power of instant management in risk management, because you need to be in a space where you can then actually go and upload evidence. And with this evidence, you can upload anything from a WhatsApp voice note to, to an Excel spreadsheet. From, from It doesn't matter what, you can upload it. And then we've got a graphical overview that we're actually saying that this is your risks that is actually over the, over the last um, year or a period of, of time. And you can see there for, for the last year. And this is your risk-based understanding. And we can put in your the locations there because we've got GPS um, uh, um, functionality there and everything. And you can know exactly what you are doing and where you are doing it. Now, the, the biggest and nicest thing with, with all of this is that if you are starting to, to work with, I have shown you um, the bow tie analysis. The bow tie analysis is here with the integrated systems. There we, there we are with the bow tie analysis. I'm just going to open it quickly for you. And I want to show you how fantastic is this. Now, this is the best and, and, and foremost and world leading bow tie methodology that you can actually have globally. Now, if you're looking at, at a bow tie, bow tie analysis, if you don't know what it is, please go and, and get for yourself ISO 31010. The bow tie analysis is described there. Now, this is a simple, a simple process of losing control over a vehicle. Now, if you, if you understand this, you, you, will, you will see that this is my risk, this is my, my causes, and this is, sorry, yeah, this is my causes and this is my consequences. Now, if you look at this, you need to actually build controls into your causes and your consequences. Look at that. Now I can see I've got four controls here. I've got one control there. Immediately, it is for me a, a red flag because I can actually see there that my control is, is a single point of failure. I'm talking business continuity language here. Also, yeah, I've got single point of failures. And, and the question is, how strong are those single point of failures? So if we're looking at a simple example here, if we're looking at, at this one, if one fails, it is actually 25% each, each one, and you can put a weighting to it um, that we can say, but if it's 25%, I've got 75% that is still intact. If I'm losing this one, I've got either a zero or a hundred percent. If I'm lo losing this one, one of these, I've got 33.33% in this. And if I'm going over into my, in, into my next, next environment, I can actually see what do I have to escalate and how do I actually build controls in my escalation? And this is, if we're talking about ESCOM, ESCOM is a constant problem. So do you have a generator? Do you have fuel? Is it service? Is it maintained? Etc. And how do I actually audit it? So now I can go and see what is my effectiveness of my auditing environment. And then if I just close that, I can go and see further. And this is fantastic, guys, because with a simple analysis, I can go and do a criticality analysis. What is critical? What is low critical? What is high critical? What is my who is accountable for this? How effective? is this. Now I'm looking at my effectiveness. I'm looking here at this is a single point of failure. And look there, I've got a poor, a poor environment there. My barrier type, I can have my P square is T square methodology in there. And you can see their behavior, etc, as well as your bar barrier category. So this is all the and and I am not even looking at at the moment, um, uh, case interviews or in instant management incident uh, or root cause analysis. Um, I, I don't want to do that now at the moment. We, we, we need to be looking at, at how do we actually do what we need to do. And the nice thing what we've got as well is that we are working with time. This is our system that is actually integrated within the analytics process to say that I'm got, I've got one of my personnel here and I am saying, Ilian, what did you do for the last week? Because you are working all over the country, myself as well. We're working from home. What did you do for the last week or for the last um, past two weeks? And very easy. I can, I can go and see what is my 
um, what what is my my production output? What is the hours of of work that people has got? Do not only look at the at at the input, but also also about the the um, the functionality as well as do they overwork or not? You can see the eleven and a half hours um, that that is in an an eight hour day. Kudos for you, Ilian. And then on a Sunday there as well, two hours and fifteen minutes, and you can see on which projects she worked. And this is this is your teams and your time sheets and your time time tracker. You've got your calendar, so so you can do your risk management planning on this on this environment. It is fantastic. It is a tool that if if I really if I knew it a few years ago with within um, within my previous environments, I would have done this with everybody because you don't have to micromanage them, anybody. People are actually reporting because this is what they need to do. And we are on 10.51 and I've got four minutes left. I want to stop there. I want to go over into what is our, how do we, how do we actually work with, I just want to go to, to the slides and guys, we can, we can share the slides with you. Uh, it is not a problem at all. Just want to go there to the slides and just get uh, a specific slide because if we are looking at 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 visualization, visualization is one of the most important environments that you that you need to need to have because you need to be in a space where you are actually looking at how can I present this to management? How can I um, do this for for? Um, sorry, I've I've got it here at the bottom. Um, how how can we present this to management? How can we make sure that what we are doing is that we are actually giving for management um, reports and we can do this. Sorry, I see that my slide is, is hidden somewhere now. Uh, doesn't matter. We are working because we are Microsoft based. We are working specifically, specifically on Power BI. Power BI Enterprise is fantastic because it reads everything that you've got either in Word or in 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 um, in Excel or anything. So to to bring that into into dashboards that is looking like like this with your GPS coordinates, you can actually go and see where did what take place. And I can change this in into I can. It is very interactive. So I I can say what did we do in Limpopo? What did we do in in um, Northwest. What did we do in um, Gauteng? And this is a real example of data that is that is on our system. So this is this is a, a a beautiful analysis of where do you have a hotspot? Where do you have a burning environment? Where where do you have um, a risk environment that you need to be focus focusing on? And if we are looking at at all of these, you can see the distribution here is in Gauteng. We can go and actually take each and every one of these these graphs, and and we can we can go and and determine what what kind of graph do we want to have in there, and we can actually make any graph that you want. It is it is it is it is as easy as that, really. It is taking this one and put it into into a donut. Ah, wow. It would have take you, taken you on Excel um, a lot of time. Um, we, can, we can even go for, for this kind of an analysis, um, a graph analysis, and those kind of things. So whether it is, it is those bar analysis or, this bar or, or, or that bar, you can build your own visualization. You are not dependent on programming to actually do that for you. And all of these, the more data we have got, guys, really, the more data we have got, the better the machine is learning about your own environment. And machine learning is a part and parcel of artificial intelligence. So give us data, give us legacy data, give us legacy risks. And all of those, the moment that, that, we, have, that we have captured it, uh, your legacy environment into, into our environment, then we have got so much information that you are not sitting with data that is just working, working now. No, you need to have data that is spanning over, I want to say, the lifetime of your company. If you don't have those kind of data, you are actually sitting with a tunnel vision and you need to be looking further and you need to actually get more out of that. 
and I want to actually close off with we have got some just just a just a few um, in endorsements that we've got already um, that is actually actually for us very nice. So if you're looking at the Financial Intelligence Center, the Financial Intelligence Center has has actually made here for us um, a very nice um, testimonial to say that we are working with combined assurance, and this is taking this is taking any system to a new level. Isn't that fantastic? We are talking about the 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 next one. This is the Beers. This is the the head of compliance and assurance, and. If we're looking here, it's, it, is me, it is not merely a measuring activity or capability. It is a super strategic helping tool to see the holistic value of the standards. Let's go for the next one. I'm, I just have four. Um, and then the PCB, some of you know the PCB. We are um, uh, PCB affiliated. The PCB is the Professional Evaluation Certification Board. We presented this in 2019 to the, the global certification environment. And um, Esat said that indeed you have done a wonderful job. And we are using this at the moment to certify companies in the Ukraine, in Kazakhstan, and we're sitting in Johannesburg. So we are conducting uh, inter, um, uh, global audits to certify companies in this regard. And then Dr. D, Dr. Eve Kadichwa. Guys, this lady is huge. She is the, the, the Director General of the, Zimb the Zimbabwean um, Standards Association. She was also for for five years the Africa um, um, Standards o Organization president, and she is sitting at the moment on the board of ISO in Geneva. And she has she has said, "Wow, we need to use this to actually implement um, what we what we have." And she was saying that I must say I'm totally to totally blown away. Now, if these guys are saying this about our system, then I can just say. Thank you very much. And I'm handing it back to, to Christopher and the EMSA team. Thanks, Nico. I think we've received quite a few questions in the chat box, which I um, uh, you know, deliberately ignored because I think the biggest thing is um, maybe sharing those inputs with, with everybody. Um, I don't know if you have access to the chat so that you can see instead of answering you know, directly to the respective people. And you're just on mute, Nico. I have got access to this. I just welcome to the so and so. Just okay. Um, I just want to ask Elian and 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 Tabi that you and Faith that you check anything that is. Um, so is a tool about assessing the maturity of, of the risk management in your environment, or is it a tool going to to be modules? Mm. Ah, fantastic. We've got modules in risk compliance, combined assurance in in, in internal audit, in investigations. So with the modules, instead of only giving you a module that is, that is actually working with a risk register, because this is what you are doing with, with all the other systems. You are just actually inputting a risk, uh, um, your risk assessments um, in, into, into your environment. We are actually saying that we are doing that, plus you are getting a module to actually look at the maturity of risk compliance and, and 23 other environments that you as a risk professional can actually have a bird's eye view of everything that is, that is actually happening in your environment. And you can implement this to, to know what is the, the, the biggest risks there. Um, and then hi, S16, please respond all questions. Tabeth, can, can, can you assess maturity as well as different modules? Absolutely. As I said, we have we have built in already 23, and we are growing. It will be um, 30 in 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 the next um, six months, because we are growing as a business, and our our client base is asking actually more. So we can assess maturity, but it is actually a risk based approach to everything. As you as you've seen in my in my first um, in the context demo, um, it is actually a risk based environment. So we are actually measuring risk. Um, click. I just want to say, okay, there are some questions, please. Okay, thanks for software demonstration. It looks great. We're currently faced serious problem in child hunger. System solve the problem or address the associated risk. Um, we're currently faced with a serious problem of child hunger. 
how can I, again, I use the system to solve the, ah, beautiful, this is operational risk. So if you're looking at operational risk, we are looking at what is the causes of that? What, what, is, what is your value chain on that? And we can plot this out on our integrated management system. And if you're looking, looking at, at this, this is actually linked to the, the food security management system. It is linked to, to this, the sustainability management system. If we link those together, you will have a great answer there. Um, this one here, I want to say, not actually. It is not so it, the system, and and I want to say if if we're saying that the system is sophisticated, we have actually built it so easy, or or made it so easy that that within all the planning, we you've got all the drop down menus, and boxes that you just pick a box. So um, your mature environments, I want to say that if your environment is on a level one or a level two of maturity, I would not buy any system because you need to, to have the grips of your own system first. So if you are level three, four, and going to a five, then I would say you need to systemize, but not you cannot build a system um, or implement a system as an, in, an enabler to actually go and implement the system for you. That is going to be disastrous. You need to make sure that your maturity, as you were saying here, it needs to be on, on a two, a 2.8, 2.9 to a three plus. Um, and then, because if, you're, if you want to be on, on, on a level four maturity, you have to have a system. It needs to be automated. So this is where we're we, where we are working from, from a 2.8, 2.9 maturity to a 4.1. And that creates, you, creates for you um, a level of maturity into a five. And then would you say the tool is suited for mining? Absolutely, we are implementing it in the mining in industry. In the, in the industrial industry, we are implementing it in banks, in uh, the reserve bank um, or the central bank in other countries. Um, and I think I have answered you there with the financial services as well. It is working in the banking environment. So um, I cannot see that it is not banking. Um, it is actually risk management is universal. So we need to be looking at a universal tool that can actually be specific as well as can, can apply all the universal um, environments. And I think that is all the questions that we have got today. Just want to see is research data related to this problem can be found on so and so. Okay, I will go and look at that. Just one great one, Nico, if I may. Um, does each need, user need a license? Or does everyone who has access need a license? Okay, every user needs a license as well as if you're looking at the at 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 the licensing, sorry, at the at the access to the system. We've got various levels of access because if you are giving blanket access to everybody, people are going to be to be uh, to delete things and you don't want to have that. You want to have people that has got um, audit rights that can only only see what is on the system but cannot change it. You want to have a super user that that is that has got access and and this is usually just one or two people in the company. And then you've got your high level users that can view it and that can actually um, comment on what they are seeing. And then you've got your full users that is actually working with the system on a day to day basis or on a uh, um, yes, on on a on a basis that we can um, can actually measure who has actually captured the data. And this is this is how our licensing processes work. So if you have got any any questions, you can you you can actually contact us on mm. on the following numbers. This is our 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 numbers, and this is our. So I will um, we can you can send questions to us. At this Nico at Islytics. It's a very easy uh, um, uh, domain there. You can also go to our website, islytics.com, and you can ask the questions there. It's as easy as that. Any more questions? I think, Nico, the rest we will need to just take offline, um, just in the interest of time. Um, but just to thank everybody, thank you, Nico, for, for just providing that wonderful demonstration. But most importantly, thank you to Ermsa for the opportunity. 
um, for us to present to you and your members and, um, and, and also just to thank all of you for attending and affording us this time uh, this, very, this morning. And we look forward to engagement and we look forward to making your, your environments easy and enabling it through our, our very um, uh, forward thinking system that we've carefully designed and, 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 and rolled out. So we look forward to our engagement. Um, and, and if we haven't been able to wade through all the questions, we will make sure that we, we get back to you accordingly and we'll contact you directly. Thank you, everybody, um, and hope to see you soon. Bye-bye. Thank you, Toby. Thanks.